Welcome to the next module. In this module, we will be covering waxing. And to start off with, I just wanna mention a few things why we wanna avoid waxing by hand. Number one is you won't get an even application of product across the boat like a machine is going to give you. Number two is you're going to miss spots because when you're doing this by hand, it's very hard to see exactly what you're doing and what you're covering. And then number three is it's gonna to lead to a lot of excess product that when you go to wipe off the excess polymer, it's all going to stick to your towel and this is going to lead to having to use more towels and making it a lot harder in the wipe off process. Now of course this can't be avoided on the entire boat as you'll see once we hop into the top side we will have to use a hand applicator to get a lot of spots because we just simply can't fit the machine in it but whenever you have a big open surface like a hull you always want to use the machine. It just makes everything so much easier, so much faster and efficient, and you're not wasting a lot of product. When we talk about machines, you really have two options here, and that is either a random orbital like I have, which is the Rupes LHR15, which is a random orbital, or a DA polisher, such as the Max Shine, which is a great budget-friendly DA polisher. So these are your two options. You need an orbital or a DA, which essentially are very similar machines. Uh, they're oscillating in random patterns and it's going to give you a good spread of the product across the entire boat. So these are the two machines. So if you want a higher price model, you're looking at $400 for the LHR15. If you want a budget model, go with the Max Shine. It doesn't have to be anything complex here. All we're doing is spreading wax across the boat. So we just need something to do that effectively. The pad that I'm using with the machine is a Rupes 5 inch medium foam pad. So we want to make sure that we have a medium foam pad when we're doing waxing. If we go with something too soft, the pad's gonna break down, become super squishy, and it's gonna be very hard to apply the wax. If we go with something too hard, then the wax is not gonna be able to absorb into the pad, and we're not gonna get a good even application. So it's really important to get something medium. So the five inch medium Rupes pad has been one of my favorite go-tos for applying wax on a boat. Now, you do have one other option here, and that is a microfiber pad. So if you want to go with a microfiber pad, this is better for those boats that maybe have just a little bit of oxidation and you need to do just a little bit of cutting to really try to restore that color back into the boat. So foam pad is for newer boats. If you're going to try to get away with a tad bit of oxidation, go ahead and use a microfiber pad that'll help get you a better finish. Since this is a beginner course, you might be asking, what is oxidation? So oxidation is when the sun, the environment, the salt water, all this stuff and this dirt and this grime starts to build up on the boat and the sun starts to oxidize it and break down the gel coat. And when this happens, you're gonna get a little bit of a chalky look. You're gonna get a little bit of you know a dollar look when you're looking at the boat. It's not gonna be looking like it does in this video right now. Um, and that is oxidation. So that's kind of my way of explaining it. If you take your phone flashlight and you shine your flashlight of your phone and you put it directly up to the gel coat and you move that flashlight around, you want to see your reflection clearly. You want to be able to see your face um, clearly in that reflection. If you can't, then that suggests that there is a little bit of oxidation in the boat. And that's okay. If you have super light oxidation, the boat still looks shiny, but it's not a perfect showroom flawless type of glare, then you'll want to go with that microfiber pad that I suggested for this waxing process. And when I do use a microfiber pad, it's from a brand called Eurofiber. They make a five inch microfiber pad. That's the one that I would use for this wax process. You're probably wondering what wax am I using? Well, actually I'm not using wax. I'm using a polymer sealant. Um, most people refer to anytime you're using a wax or a polymer as just waxing the boat, but Keep in mind that we are using a polymer sealant and there's a difference here. So when you think of wax, you got to think of wax as an oil. So an oil is just going to sit on top of the boat and it's going to come off when you have chemicals or you have abrasion. And this is what a wax is. A wax doesn't actually bond to the boat like a polymer does. A polymer actually has linked chains and molecules that do take time to cure and actually bond to your boat forming a thin like layer of plastic over your surface. So a wax, you know, I like to think of a wax like grease. If you were to put a little bit of grease on your boat, you know, grease is an oil. 
it's going to rub off. You can rub it off. You can take it off with a chemical, but it's not going to actually bond to that boat. But a polymer, on the other hand, is sort of like if I had to think of like super glue. Super glue is actually going to form a bond. So when you put super glue on plastic or anything that you're trying to repair, that super glue is going to make and form a bond. So this is what a polymer is. So with this polymer sealant, and I'm using Jeskar Ultralock. So keep in mind that this is very important to this course. Jeskar Ultralock is what you need to be using if you want to get the results that I'm going to be sharing throughout this entire course. So this is six month protection. So you can tell your client, Mr. or Mrs. Client, this is six month protection. Make sure you're taking care of your boat. Now, what does that mean? Um, that means no using degreasers, no using acid, no using harsh chemicals, bathroom cleaners, kitchen cleaners, none of that can be used on your boat, no bleach, because this will take off and slowly start to break down the bond that you're putting on the boat. So make sure you let the client know, hey, use a pH balanced soap. A great pH balanced soap is Stark Pure Clean. And then also give them the option if they want to protect their boat once a month to do a SiO2 spray. So my recommendation for this is Stark Replenish an SiO2 spray is just a, another layer of protection that can bond with the polymer. And if they want to spray this on their boat once a month, it's a simple application. They spray it on the boat, wipe it off with a microfiber towel. It's just like doing a spray wax, except it's a better product and it helps extend the longevity of your polymer. Share all this with the client, give them the knowledge that they need, and this is how you create value for them and you make sure the boat's protected and that they're getting six months out of the boat. So between you and the client, share as much information as possible and work together to maintain this boat and get them on that two year schedule where they can get this polymer sealant done twice a year if your climate is, boats are in the water all year round, such as Florida or any of these more tropical environments. And then if you're up north, um, New York, Ohio, then you can get them on a once a year schedule. A little bit more on the science of an SiO2 is it's very similar to the durability of a wax however it's much different than wax so you're getting about three months of durability but the property is very different wax is a natural product that comes from a brazilian palm tree that's secreted in the palms of the tree and we take that oil and it's called carnauba wax and that's where we get carnauba wax from however this proposes many challenges and especially in extreme environments because it is an oil when we have extreme sunlight and heat, this oil can actually stain into the gel coat if it gets too hot and turn the boat a yellowing color. And then you have to rebuff out the boat and redo this whole process. So wax is becoming very outdated. It has a lot of issues, it presents a lot of problems, and it doesn't last in terms of durability. However, in SiO2, there's so much more to offer. It's very safe, it's easy to use. You can easily throw an SiO2 spray over top of a ceramic coating or a polymer sealant and all this product is doing is helping you extend the life of the coating. So this is the big selling point here is extending the life of the coating. So easy to work with, so easy to use. Um, you're gonna increase the UV protection, you're gonna increase durability by three months, and you're gonna increase the hydrophobic properties, which is a huge selling point for most people because we all love those beads and the slickness that this product gives us. So this is a little bit more on SiO2, so when you're selling this to the client, just let them know that this is something they can use to maintain the bow with or they can hop on a wash schedule with you where you could do this for them every single month. You could create a wash program, a price, and you could explain to the client exactly what you'll be doing and how you'll be spraying the SAO2 over their boat once a month. So you wanna work as a team with your client to maintain this boat. Don't just come out, do their boat, and then leave them hanging. No, tell them what they need to know, help them maintain that boat, makes you look good, helps them become a repeat customer in the future. We covered machines, we covered pads, foam for a new boat, great condition, such as this boat that I'm working on today, and a microfiber pad for a boat that maybe has a little slight oxidation. And then we talked about the polymer that we're using, Jeskar Ultralock. I talked about patterns, up and down, side to side, make sure you're covering the whole boat. And then I also talked about putting two to three dots on your pad once that pad is primed and you've worked in a few sections because that wax is gonna already be in the pad and it's gonna get you through the rest of the detail. So here in a second, we're gonna be covering how to wipe off the excess. But before we get to that, I just want you to really watch me and notice the patterns, how I'm applying, because there's no better way to learn than actually watching me do something. So just watch for a moment 
and then we'll get to how to wipe off the excess product. We made it. Now, how long did I let the polymer sit? So in my situation with the canopy above me, it is about 90 degrees. It is pretty hot and humid out. But since we have that shade, shade becomes the biggest factor, followed by heat. We were able to wait 30 minutes. We also had a really good conditioned boat. We didn't have any slight oxidation. So all these things come into factor, the heat, the sun, and how much oxidation is in the boat in terms of how long you can wait to wet this off. So if you have a perfectly conditioned boat, brand new boat, you get as much time as you need to wipe off this polymer. But when you start to get into a little oxidation, a little bit of age on the boat, some heat, some sunlight, this makes things different. So we waited a half an hour, 30 minutes per side. I come, I do the whole side of the boat, wait 30 minutes. Usually by the time I'm finished, you know, I'm able to come back and wipe it off. So really time this up, do about 30 minutes of work in terms of application. And then once that 30 minutes is up, come back, wipe off what you just applied. And like I said, a different situation if we were out in the sunlight in the 90s and this boat had a little oxidation, we could only wait 10 minutes. So you're going to get about a 10 to 30 minute time frame range. And then if you're in a storage building, you might get 45 to an hour. If you're in a winter storage building in Ohio or New York or something, you could probably get up to an hour for this to cure. So really it comes down to exactly what your environment is. So make your best judgment. Heat, sunlight, lowers the time, oxidation, lowers the time, cold, storage, winter time, no humidity, this extends that life. So you got about a 10 minute to an hour time frame, depending on what you're doing, where you're at, what time of year it is. Make that judgment for yourself. I just explained it the best I could. So we're gonna come back with two towels. Now I'm coming back with one towel first, and this is an Adams Polishes microfiber plush towel. It's a great towel. It is on Amazon. It is expensive, but this towel is incredible and it really has so many fibers and it just picks up all that excess so easily and it just makes your job easier. So that's why I love to use this towel. Now we want to make sure that we're not using a microfiber towel that is very rough and you know we can't just use a ordinary kitchen microfiber that's not going to cut it no ordinary kitchen or cleaning microfiber we have to have a plush microfiber safe for paint safe for gel coat we're going to come we're going to wipe off all this excess with this towel one time we're going to get another towel which is actually the same exact towel and we're going to come back with that second towel wipe off everything again to make sure that all the polymers off the boat we don't want to leave any polymer left on the boat so this part just ensures quality control making sure you're doing a good job and I did want to give you a budget friendly option for microfiber towels. If you want to go on Amazon and search plush microfibers, you can find bulk packs for much cheaper than I'm paying individually for one Adams Polishes microfiber plush towel. So if you want that budget option, I will do that at times. Go on there and they have pretty good towels on Amazon as well. So anything that's plush, that's going to be safe for paint, safe for gel coat, no scratching, um, is an amazing thing to use. And you'll notice as I wipe this off, just how much shine is in this boat like this polymer Jeskar Ultralock adds so much depth so much shine and color back into these boats especially any colored boats such as this blue piece that I'm working on it really makes the boat look like a ceramic coating it feels like a ceramic coating and it acts like a ceramic coating so this is Jeskar Ultralock which is infused with SiO2 SiO2 can be used as a topper like I mentioned previously for your client and this is just an amazing product and it's really essential that you're using this product with this course because everything goes together to match the results that you're looking for. You've watched me do a whole side of the hall. We'll be doing the exact same process to the other side of the hall. It's very simple. This is the simplest part of this process is doing the hall in the top side right above the rub rail because it's super simple, easy going. You're going to use a machine the whole time. When you're finished, you're going to come back after you know, 20, 30 minutes, whatever your situation is, you're going to wipe it off initially with one microfiber towel, come back after that, wipe it off additionally with a second microfiber towel to ensure your quality, and then you're all set to go. So actually, you're going to see right here, right now, I have this second microfiber that I'm opening out of the bag in this moment. So I'm going to come back, 
do our quality control, make sure we didn't miss any spots because if you do miss some polymer on the boat, it's going to look a little dull in that spot and it's going to take away from the overall job that you're doing. So it's just really important that we're making sure that we're doing the best we can and paying attention, attention to detail, focus, consciousness, right? All these things. So we're going to finish wiping off this top section and going to go to the top side. So I'm just going to speed this up. You guys can watch the rest of this process and going to speed it up. We'll jump inside the top side and explain exactly what's going on in there. I'm back, we're on the top side. I have the Rupes LHR-15. You're gonna get a little bit of better action. I got the GoPro on my head in this footage and we're gonna keep continuing. So this is where it is gonna get a little challenging. It's gonna get a lot different. The top side has a lot more things to work around, vinyl seats, bright work windows, all these things that we have to work around. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna get everything that we can with the machine and anything we can't get with the machine, we're gonna get with a hand applicator. Now, one thing I didn't mention with the machine is what speed are we running this at? I'm running this machine at four or five, which seems to be optimal for the Rupes for spreading out the wax evenly, making sure it's not too slow and it's not too fast because if it's too fast, then it's gonna have a lot of sling. So just kind of watch me and what I'm doing. Like I was saying, you get a better angle in this footage. So I'm gonna come back, I'm gonna put a little bit more product on the pad, so just get an idea of how much I'm actually putting on the pad. So although I didn't do dots, it's just a little bit each time that I'm adding to the pad. And I want you to kind of watch, I'm gonna speed this up a little bit, and then we'll go into the section where we finish using the machine and we actually have to jump to the hand applicator. We're finished with the machine and now we're gonna get the spots that just aren't optimal to get with the machine and it makes it a little more difficult. Another thing I wanna say is that I'm not doing non-skid. No non-skid gets waxed. This is actually gonna be an upgrade that is gonna be offered to the client. And we're gonna talk about this part and the pricing at the end of the course. So stay around for the pricing. Um, non-skid is always an add-on. I just do all the smooth fiberglass and make a package out of that with the bright work, the vinyl, non-skid is extra because not everybody wants their non-skid waxed and it will be a little more slick but it will be protected i have this red applicator pad it's a foam application pad which makes it easy to clean rinse out the wax or the polymer with a little bit of dish soap and i believe this is griot's garage applicator pads which i got on amazon so there are tons of applicator pads on amazon just make sure you get a quality foam one it doesn't have to be massive this is about a three inch pad and i noticed this is perfect for doing anything that you need to do on the top side of a boat so we're going to get this little section here with the machine again and then we'll get the applicator pad back out now i'm not going to wax inside the compartments as you'll see i'm just going to be waxing around the compartments all the hatch tracks but not actually inside the compartments um for me it just doesn't really seem to make a lot of sense you could Go with a SiO2 spray if you wanted to. It wouldn't take you a whole lot of extra time to do this or perform this. But a lot of boaters simply just keep a lot of their supplies, life jackets and things like that in their hatches. So really the key for hatches is cleaning them, making sure they're really clean. And I don't usually spend time waxing them because you're not gonna see it a lot of times. It's just storage. And simply it's just not getting any sun exposure. So it's not gonna have oxidation buildup. One thing that I don't have footage of that I'm not gonna be showing here is waxing the outboards, but keep in mind, it's the same process as gel coat and treat it the same way. Put a little bit of polymer on the pad and work it into the paint. Wait 20 to 30 minutes, come back, wipe it off, but make sure you don't forget that part. Always do the outboards and always include that in your wash and wax package. A few other tips before we wrap this up and move into the next module is I just wanna do a big recap on everything. So number one, you have two machines you can use. 
you never want to do by hand unless you have to as you can see we have to on the top side but this does eliminate a little bit of the quality and you're going to use a little bit more product so the two machines that you have are the lhr 15 rupes or you can use the max shine which is a budget option around 130 versus a 420 dollars machine so those are your options there we are using Jeskar Ultralock, which is an SiO2 infused polymer sealant. This has many advantages over wax, much safer, no staining, great durability, and amazing water feeding properties. Remember, when you're finished, you have two microfiber plush towels. You'll come with one, wipe off all the excess, and then follow with a second one to ensure quality. The pad we're using is a medium foam pad. Never go with a super soft pad. It's going to break down quick. You're not going to get multiple uses out of the pad and it's going to get really squishy and hard to apply if you use a pad that's way too hard such as a lake country gray force foam pad you're not going to get any absorption of the polymer into that pad and it's going to be super hard to spread around the boat so just make sure you're using something medium something that has some firmness but something that also can absorb some product and spread around the boat so my favorite is the rupes medium five inch pad if you have a boat with slight oxidation then you can use a microfiber pad, which is from Eurofiber, which you can buy on MarineDetailSupply.com. And I have this red applicator, which I got from Amazon for doing all the tedious parts. We don't have to actually get inside of the hatches because the hatches don't get any oxidation, but I do still get the hatch tracks. And we're gonna work from the bow all the way to the transom doing this exact process, which I will not be showing, but you can take a quick look at and guys, with that said, I will see you in the next module.